Hold on. Hey everybody, it's Fernando. Just wanted to take a minute and review a couple things about our estimate scheduling system. Um, up here in Sacramento, things have been a little squirrely. I think we're doing a pretty good job with it, but things could be a little bit better. So I just want to take a minute, kind of do a little retraining and remind everybody exactly how we want to be doing things. Um, so first and foremost, scheduling jobs into Cashmoo. I want to take a second and review what my understanding is and having reviewed with the other store managers in Sacramento, what exactly and how we want it listed in Cashmoo. First and foremost, whenever you're scheduling something in Cashmoo, hit the refresh button. Probably the first thing you should do. The reason why is we can leave Cashmoo open in our computers, but if we don't refresh, we don't know what's happened since the last time we refreshed. There could have been multiple estimates scheduled and that's an easy way to double book. All right, so first things first. When scheduling Cashmoo, the biggest thing I wanted to review on that side of things is what we're putting in these three boxes. I think it would be important that all three stores in Sacramento, because we share one cash move, be doing it the exact same way. Um, having discussed this with Steve and Bill, here's what we think, and Wayne, here's what we think should be done. Under the job number box, you should list your store. For me, it would be RK. Your name, rather than writing Fernando, I just write FDJ, my initials, and your job number. This is very helpful inside the store. Below that, on the same side, is name. Last name, comma, first name, just like we do in Role Master. And then in Project ID over here, we want to put the Project ID number and the customer address. This would be 27 B Street, Rockland, California. And then the only thing I'm not sure yet about, which Steve will be confirming with us tomorrow in his meeting with the estimators, do we want the phone number? If the answer is yes, we're going to put it at the end of the address. Easy enough. Okay, so please make sure you do it that way. Having that uniformity makes it easier in the morning when we're running our reports, seeing what est estimates each store has. And also it makes it easier for all the staff when they're trying to schedule estimates to have all the information they need to know where their estimators are at and when. Next thing I wanted to go over on behalf of the estimators is just go over four points that the estimators are finding um, important to them. I think they're important as well. First thing. Enter all materials. So this is in Roll Master when we're F5-ing over to Floor Master. You want to make sure any product that the customer may have us give the bid on is entered in the computer prior to the estimate. Secondly, make sure you're entering all the rooms. Having talked to a couple of the estimators, this has been lacking big time. No real excuse for that. Once we enter all, when we're entering the carpets, the easiest thing to do when you enter your first carpet is list all the rooms. Just ask them. Okay, we're measuring your whole house. What rooms does that entail? Three bedrooms, family room, living room, dining room. Just list each room and list it for the product. So list your carpet rooms under the carpet, list your vinyl rooms for vinyl, and list your laminate rooms for laminate. This makes their job a lot easier. Also, we've talked about this many times, and I feel like when we're good at this one, our, est our closure rate on site goes through the roof. Leave worthwhile notes. If there's any chance of the estimator closing on site, give him the notes that will help him do that. This is very important. The more informed they are, the better. They don't have a rapport with the client like you do. They don't know them from Adam. So the more information we can give them in regards to what the job needs, who this customer is, what their budget is, things of that nature, the better. And then finally, one of the most important things and one of the big reasons for this little training, schedule properly. Bear with me while I flip this over and we'll discuss that a little bit more. All right, schedule properly. What do I mean by that? Cashmoo doesn't have the safeguards that Floormaster had or when we used to print out specific appointment times. This is on purpose because we want to give you guys more flexibility, but this also gives you a greater chance of possibly putting your estimators in harm's way. So really take your time when you're scheduling the estimator, please. First thing, schedule the closest estimator. Rancho should be trying to schedule Rod completely before they move to someone else. Elk Grove, Pat, Rockland, Todd, everybody, Bobby next. And above and beyond that, look at where they're at. Rod may be doing an estimate for Rockland and Todd may be doing one for Rancho. And if Todd's already in Rancho, give Todd that next one in Rancho if that's what it takes. Keep them fluid, keep them in a, in a close proximity because that lets them do more work for us. Next thing. There should be driving gaps. Whatever time you book with your estimator, 
if I have Todd measuring a house of carpet, let's say, and I book him an hour, what I'm saying by booking him an hour is that he needs to be in that house for an hour. He needs, you know, 30 minutes to measure and 30 minutes to answer questions and close the deal or whatever ratio you come up with. But that is time in the house. That does not include any driving time. Therefore, there should be driving gaps. So let's do a little example. Example. Todd has a, a measure from 1 to 3 p.m. in Lincoln. Someone scheduled it. Who cares what it is or why? What you should think of that when you look at that as a salesperson is he needs to be in that house from 1 to 3 p.m. So the question is, everyone else is booked. You want to schedule 1,000 square feet in Midtown. How much time and when? My thinking as a salesperson is to measure 1,000 feet of carpet probably need 25, 30 minutes. I don't know, 30 minutes, I would think. And then with this particular client, um, she had a lot of questions. She wanted to talk to a professional. So I'm thinking she needs maybe 15 minutes of maybe some question and answer time. And I really thought this one had a chance of closing. So I gave, I'm going to give Todd another 15 minutes to try and close the deal. So in this scenario, I think Todd needs one hour. To me, that seems reasonable your situation may be different. So the next question is, in Cashmoo, where do I book this? Well, in the past, what I think we may have done is we may have either booked this as a 12 to 1 o'clock, or we may have booked it as a 3 to 4 o'clock. Both of those would be the wrong answer, and both of those would obviously put Todd in harm's way. Why? Because if he was in Midtown from 12 to 1 o'clock, there's no way he can get to Lincoln in zero minutes. Vice versa, if he's in Lincoln and leaving at 3 p.m., there's no way he can be in Midtown at 3 p.m. with zero minutes. So my thought would be from Lincoln to Midtown, or let's say in the, the first scenario, he's going to be in Midtown. I know he's got to be at Lincoln at 1 o'clock, so I'm thinking 1 o'clock on a weekday, not much traffic. He can probably do that in a half hour, maybe 40 minutes. So if you were going to schedule prior, you'd want to have him done with his estimate at 1240, right? And starting that estimate at 1140. Or vice versa, you'd want him leaving Lincoln at 3 and give him about 45 minutes, maybe an hour because traffic might be approaching. Give him about 45 minutes to get to Midtown. So we should probably schedule that Midtown estimate at 345 to 445. Now, I know this all seems very rudimentary, very basic. It is. I think the thing is we just need to slow down a little bit, take a little time, and give our estimators a chance to succeed. We all know how to do this. I know it's, things are a little tight. We're a little busy. But just take your time, think logically about the situation, and give your estimator a little bit of time. One last thing I wanted to mention try and be as accurate as you can with this. When you're trying to decide how much time to give them, Give them an accurate amount. I often see, we often see them getting not enough time to sell, but I also see sometimes where we're giving them way too much time to sell. If Todd's measuring a thousand feet of carpet and the customer has tons of questions and he's going to spend a lot of time selling, this should never be a two hour estimate. There's no way that could be the case, right? So take your time, think about it. For some of the newer staff, if you're not sure, ask a floor manager, ask a veteran staff member, ask your store manager. Let's try and get these as accurate as we can because I think that'll, one, it'll free up our estimators to be able to do more estimates. We'll end up with less unhappy clients, better chance of closing deals, and I think it'll just give us give our clients an all-around better experience. And anytime we do any training, it's all about what's going to be best for our clients, and I think this would be the case. So if you have any questions, concerns, or issues, feel free to call me, talk to your store manager about what we've got up here. But I think for the most part, that should cover what I wanted to talk about today. So thanks for the time, guys. Have a good day.